Hello, welcome to MCFC 9320 Group. Uh, tonight, we've got Mr. Jeff Durban. How are you, Jeff? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm very, very good. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's uh, an honour. Yeah, it's an it's... honour. I've watched many times and, and never been on, so uh, nice to uh, have the boot on the other foot. As, as you know, we have, we have a bit of a giggle on here. We don't we don't take ourselves seriously. Well, m- most of the time, anyway. So we've got Alex as well, and we've got Celebrity John. How are you? Good evening. We all good? every time. Alex? Fresh from Madrid. For, like, listen, we'll we'll brush over that one in a bit. It's, <laughs> I don't really want to go, go back there unless unless you want to. Uh, we've got to start tonight with uh, the announcement from City about Haaland. It's a done deal. Pen, you know, up until uh, personal terms, what well, that that that'll be done and dusted. City would not announce announce something like that unless it was a, a done deal, would they, John? No, they wouldn't. Definitely not. Um, I know the PR is a bit silly at times at what they do. Um, it's like I, I got a picture sent to me the other day of saying I think it was in um, over in Dubai or something like that. A big, massive sign on the side of the, a building saying Man City. European champions, and I, I couldn't believe it, but never mind. But yeah, they've announced it today, so I, I think everything's going to be uh, going ahead with that. Happy with that, Jeff? Oh, you've got to be, haven't you? I mean, you, you know, you listen to all of the opinions of particularly of other professionals or former professionals, and I've not found one yet that doesn't sort of wax lyrical about him. The only negative you get at all is the sort of, uh, is he a bit injury prone? But I mean, you know, you... <laughs> You, you can say that about a lot of players, but he, he'll he bring something different. Um, I, I always, you know, you look back at sort of recordings of previous goals, but let's be honest, you know, we, we looked at, you know, fantastic goals from all sorts of players. I haven't quite worked out, but I think in this case, it's, you know, it, what he's achieved at this young age is quite incredible. And, um, mm-hmm. and you know, he's, he's choosing the best club for him to further his career and hopefully... Uh, you know, for me, it's not about will he, will he help to win us the Champions League. Yeah, of course, that's going to be on everyone's lips. But I'm just looking forward to watching him, watching him play that, you know, perhaps just, you know, a little bit of a another option to the way that we can play as well. Because, you know, you've only got to look at the last few games and see the total difference between the approaches of some of the opposition and the difference in games. You know, Brighton, that first half was probably one of the worst halves you'll ever see. Yeah. Um, and then the open sort of nature of, of uh, even a Watford or, or a or Newcastle. So, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, looking forward to it. And um, it's always, you can always start bringing up other subjects and not try, trying to lead it, but um, I have no objection to the price I've got to pay for my season ticket next, next uh, year to, to, to watch him. Absolutely. And I will, I will say one thing, Jeff, the Bundesliga is probably the closest to the Premier League, you know, for, you know, physicality and stuff like that. So I think is, you know, I think you will adapt quite, quite easily, really. That transition, you know, going from the Bundesliga to the, the Premier League, it, it the lad will take it in his stride because of it is a beast, isn't it? Let's not make, you know, and there's no two ways about it. He... He might take a bit of time to settle in. It usually does when when players come from foreign clubs. We'll give him um, ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> no, the press will give him ten minutes. We'll give him a season. Mm. Alex, here's one for you. Right. Yep. Ireland, fifty-three million. Why, why, why do the media always exaggerate figures when it comes to City players? Like, if, it, if it's, say, a Sancho summit going to, going to the rags, it's always, say, Jaden Sancho, it's going to cost, say, 60 million. When it's anything related to City, it's always Joe Bloggs, it's going to be 65 million, plus his wages are going to be this. And, you know, why, why did he always put that spin on City? First of all, because it sells good. And second, because nobody trusts that we have a really good player management, really good, really good uh, training staff. Um, they just think that people are coming to City because of the money. And, you know, that's the only reason. And that's the only reason to success, which is ridiculous. So why would anybody talk about how functional City are as a club? Nobody cares apart from us. Yeah. And you know, we already know that. So. It's, it's got a point there, Jeff, Annie, because, you know, 
let's let's not forget players used to jo- join City, you know, for for money, you know. But and then you know, like your Rubinho was well, he, did, he didn't even know where he was joining to to be fair. But you have players of that ilk in the early early days. But then you look at the likes of your Zabaletas, your companies, your David Silvers, uh, your Agueros. You know, they wasn't well according to you know sources close to City. They wasn't on huge huge amounts of money, but. You know the longevity there was 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 te- ten year, ten years a piece pretty much, wasn't it? So there's there's something other than money there. Yeah, but uh, the one I always go back to is Gareth Barry, who I, I think was the first you know big signing. And if you remember at the time he was supposed to go to Liverpool from Villa, he chose us at a time when we'd not done anything, um, and the accusations were you know it was huge accusations. Well, he's over, clearly only going for the money. He's not going to win anything. He's going for the money because at that stage we were, you know, we we were there was big doubt as to whether we would actually achieve it. But he was part of the vision. He saw the the project. He saw what was, you know, planned. And to be fair to him, he he came and he he proved that he wasn't there just for the money. He actually, you know, helped us win things. So um, that was probably the one that sticks it in the mind, really. But you know, you, we we don't know what's going what's going through players' minds. We don't know the full details of all the finances. Um, the thing I'd be interested in is, is, you know, what are we going to do to balance the books? You know, you, you obviously the obvious two are uh, Jesus and and Sterling, um, and I think that you know the, that's an interesting one. Also, perhaps in terms of timing, I mean, I don't think City had any choice really but to go out today because of for various reasons of of leaks and so on. But you know, the tweets from other players look very positive, but there may be certain players that could be unsettled by that. You know, so you know, timing maybe maybe okay, maybe maybe not. Um, but I think it's difficult for us to assess fully until we can see the the, the squad, you know, lining up next season. You know, we're, we're, we're guessing a little bit, but you assume that there will be there will be some departures. It's it's almost like you've seen my notes there, Jeff. <laughs> what, what I've uh, what I penned down before before we we started the recording. So well, our rooms join on, don't they? You can see there, you know, on the screen. So I know, I know. we don't, the... don't realise you're only. I know. You're, yeah. you're only there through the wall, John. So. Let, let, let's get straight to exactly the point what, what Jeff was saying then. I've got outgoings in the summer. Uh, we know Fernandinho's going. Uh, the question mark is over Jesus and Sterling. Um, I, can't, I, I can't see both Jesus and Sterling going. Uh, which one would you prefer to keep if you had to keep one of those two? Oh. Um, you went in slow. It's a hard decision now because <laughs> I think he's been on the GT. Basically, on the same, basically <laughs> has it messed up? It, it, that question's really fighting fi- <laughs> down your, your connection, mate. Jeez. Slowed you has down it, quite a bit. Has it slowed me down now? Yeah, something needs it's to that it's that media just trying to hack into the systems again. Yeah. That's what it is. So right, you're basically you down, John, to be fair. So what? <laughs> keep which one? Which one would you keep? Which one would you either reluctantly sell or gladly sell? Right. Well, it's hard. Cause it's a very hard question. No, it's quite because easy. it's not because they are very much the same player. And to be honest with you, at the moment, I would keep <clears throat> Jesus because he seems to be a bit more on form than Sterling. I know Sterling scored two at the weekend, but it's not consistent enough. And, and it's a very, it, to me, I would let them both go. Mm. I think that's an interesting point. I, I, I can actually I can actually see that, Alex. Can you? Yep, I can see both going. Personally, I would gladly keep Jesus, and I would gladly sell Raheem. Hang on a minute! You've <laughs> slar- you've slaughtered Gab all season, and because he's scored no 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 no, no. no. all want, season, I've got, been his I've biggest got fan. His name and number on now. I'm his biggest fan this season. Last season, I I wasn't really. Not even near he, his biggest fan. So times change. To be to be to be fair, I'll be I'd be gutted to see Gab go. Um, 
it looks like it looks like he will go because you know he wears the number nine. I can see him, I can see him going to Spain, not not Arsenal. Um, I just think his work his work rate is incredible. Sterling has improved over the past few weeks. You know, he's he's not running into as many players now as, as he normally does. He's, he's, he's found... He's not. He is. He is. <laughs> but to, to be honest with you, where, regarding him running into players, when he gets the ball, they surround him. So he's no option but to run into him, has he? Alex is on the vodka. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, plastic bottle. Jeff, if you had, if you had to keep one, get rid of one. Which one would you keep? I keep Sterling uh, on the basis of the, the supply play? line to to Haaland compared with with Jesus. But I I, I do think it'd be interesting if both went. You look at the money that we bank for that compared with what we're paying for Haaland, and in terms of the sort of sustainability and the approach that we're not just forever, you know, uh, well, you, you can't just forever look at. Um, donations from the owner anyway because of the fair play rules and so on but you know from a business point of view um, and looking at the squad that we would still have um, plus the signing two signings effectively now we've got in the bag uh, you know I wonder whether that's more than enough I mean you can you, argue you about have been peeping over my shoulder because here's what a, here's a potential squad for, for next season and this doesn't take into consideration any of the kids coming through or anything like that mm. without Edison Walk. I, I do think we need a a proper proper somebody to put a challenge on Edison because I think he's got a little bit um, complacent this season. Uh, Edison Walker, Diaz, Stones, Laporte, Ake, Zinchenko, Cancelo. I think defensively there is not along there. I think Ake's had a, a decent old season as well. Midfield, you're looking at De Bruyne, Rodri, Gundogan, Mares, Foden, Grealish. Again. You know, that's, that, that's as strong as it goes. And the forward line alone, Jesus, Sterling, Alvarez, Haaland, that's that just that's just goals. And that's not yeah. taken into consideration like your your Delaps or your uh yeah. your you know your Palmer and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's quite compelling. You know, you if you you look at that, certainly if I think if if we knew now that that, that both Jesus and Sterling were going. I, I can't see any any panic for that, and it, it sort of makes a lot of sense. But you know, as usual, we're we're, we're guessing in, in terms in terms of that. And I think the more interesting for me would be just to understand you know what what would be going on in Pep's mind in terms of actually the impact in in you know is there going to be any change in terms of the style of play at all? Does Haaland have to adapt a little bit more compared with the way that he'll have played before? So you know, there's all that sort of stuff, but. Um, that you know, I, I bow to the expertise, and I'm just a fan with a, a very basic knowledge, and I think we all can get carried away with that sometimes. But I, if, you know, I, I don't think we could say we'd be sure if both those players, uh, if both those players went. I do think that recently, I mean, I think Jesus has shown this season really what he does bring. I mean, you know, I think he's been a lot better. The energy he brings, the work rate, all you know, a lot of the stuff that he does. In fact, even Sterling's work rate has improved. I think th th this season. Um, so you'd be losing two two really really good players, but uh, you've made a good point. I think going through the, the squad as it is, yeah, it's strong enough to win the league. I think to, I, I think the crucial thing here as well for us to to keep the youngsters happy who are who are actually ma making you know strong <laughs> strides you know towards the first team this season. If you had our current squ squad and had Alvarez and Haaland, I think your Delaps and your Cole Palmers will start getting a little bit, you know, miffed, and we would lose these these kind of kind of players. And I'd love to see him progress like they have to. Well, obviously, Delaps not this season, you know, through injury and stuff like that. But Cole Palmer himself, you know, I know he's had a few injuries as well. But when they've when they've played, they've shown real promise. And if it means getting rid of one or both of Jesus and Sterling. To to keep these kids, I think I'd, I'd gamble and I'd, I'd I'd let I'd let them both go, John. Yeah, I'd let them both go. Definitely, um, they are not consistent enough for me. Um, we need somebody that is consistent, new enough. For, like 
I know you De Bruyne has the odd game where he doesn't play fantastic, but near enough every game is consistent. You get Sterling and you get Jesus. They're in fits and starts basically, and it all depends. It all depends who we're playing. Um, Sterling can look fantastic at times, but most of the time he just like runs into brick walls. <coughs> he loses the ball too often, and yes, he tracks back, he defends, but we just need something more out of him, and it's I don't think it's going to happen. Would you then, John, or Alex, or, or Jeff, as a safety blanket, because we don't know how Haaland's going to perform in the Premier League, or Alvarez, would you keep at least one of Jesus or Sterling till, say, January? Yeah, but you, that's predicated on a lot of assumptions. I mean, that's almost assuming that the players will do whatever they're asked or told to, to do. I mean, you know, they, they, they do have an opinion. They have agents. It's not just about the club. It's, there's a whole load of factors involved in that. So I think there's there's more that you need to know um, in terms of, of the decision you, you, you'd make. I think for me, it'd be more about injury cover than, than, than anything else. But then how do you keep everyone happy? And I think Pep's done an amazing job to keep you know, a lot of players happy. I mean, particularly like Stones recently, obviously there's injuries, but, you know, you, you look through the, the times and I'm thinking he's never going to, you know, get through that. But, you know, he seems to have found a way to do it. So we've got to have confidence that he'll find a way to manage that situation you're talking about with the Delaps and so on coming through, who are, you know, Cole Palmer, really exciting prospects. I think we all, as, as you know, keen City fans who want to see some some of our own come through, I think that would... The, that would the main mean, one it mean, I like out of them. them. The main one I like out of them is McAtee. He's yeah. a really, really good player. Yeah. Um, regarding the squad, though, um, you've got to remember that Sterling is English. So that's the isn't thing ha- that is it, isn't probably keeps born in me safe. <laughs> hey? He's born in Leeds. He's born in Leeds, I suppose. <laughs> I've got him going. He, he so you mentioned like Yorkshire. He's, he's classed as homegrown then, isn't he? It should well, be. You keep turning into Ark right off uh, open all hours there, there John. <laughs> Metal Mickey. I think it's my Wi-Fi playing up. But, but that, that's, a, that's a point. Would, would he be classed as homegrown? Because, you know, he, he was born in Leeds. So I he... might freeze slightly. I'm going to change the Wi-Fi. Oh, t- t- two, two Wi-Fi family, are we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's an interesting one. But, you know, joking aside, you know, it's... I would be prepared to to sacrifice one one or two for you know for, for the you know to, to secure that them kids. Yeah, agreed. I, I agree with that. I'm back again. Mm. So let let's let's brush over Madrid. I thought it was brilliant, you know. For te- you know for eighty nine minutes, we was we was <clears> fantastic, <throat> and then we just had. An headless chicken, ten minutes. We could do, could have done with that referee that stopped the game the other month for uh, eighty-five minutes, couldn't we? Uh, listen, the, the, we we can say what we want. Over two legs, was we good enough? I'd say we was more than good enough. We just had a few things what just didn't go our way. Whether it was you know, the, uh, I, I thought Ed, Edison should have got the, the first one like against Madrid. You know, he could have come out and scooped that, but if spots, maybe, and whatever, I'm not too, I'm not too downhearted over it, if, if I'm honest, because the Premier League, as as these guys know, Jeff, that that that's the bread and butter for me, the Premier League. I'm not too fussed about the Champions League. As a club, we need to win it, but me as a fan, I'm not too fussed about it, if I'm honest. Yeah, I'm I'm getting a bit worried because, like you say, I've been looking at your notes. I think we're agreeing on a lot. We've got the same hair. Hair, haircut the same barber you know it's like there's, there's a lot going on here isn't there really but, um, Alex is not far behind though is he yeah <laughs> yeah alright John it's alright for you to talk you know that might not all be your own we, we don't really know oh it what is what it is <laughs> mm. he has to look He's his best on the big screen every week mm. well let's not change the subject to, to a dodgy haircut so speaking of someone who sat behind Peter Swales in, in a car on many occasions going to support us clubs and, and studying every inch of exactly how, how it all worked. It was, uh, I, could, I, could, I could probably do a thesis on Peter Swales. 
um, <laughs> hair, hair, hair. Well, it was it, well, it, it, yeah. For another for another day, we'll maybe 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 bring up haircuts and But just going back to to Madrid, I, I think you have to look at the things that we could have done better. You can speculate and talk about all sorts of things, but. For me, it's a dead simple analysis. The, the first leg, absolutely clearly, we should have scored more. Yeah, and that's not been something that is just one game. It's been something going on for several seasons, actually. And we haven't been ruthless. I mean, wherever you sit, what, whoever you're with, you know, how many times have we said we should have, we should have been more ruthless, we should have been more clinical. So that that is one factor. The second factor to me is. <laughs> When you get to the last few minutes of a Champions League semi-final, you do not switch off. You cannot ever have an excuse for switching off. Grealish did, and he's only been on a few minutes. And Cancelo, who is a phenomenal player, you, you know, I'd rather have a defender like that who's perhaps not the best defender but can do what he can do. I'd rather, I, you know, I'd rather have a player like that. I'm not criticising him, but in that situation, he knows he could have done better, and that led to two goals. Again, you've got bad luck in terms of who's defending has just come off the other guy's head. So you're not allowed to say it's bad luck, but, but luck comes into it. But fundamentally, we didn't score enough in the first leg, which we should have done, and we switched off yeah. for a few minutes, and that's football. It, it, you don't really need to spend much more time analysing it. For me, it's it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the last thing I'd say, just in terms of your emotion about, and this is what bothers me, actually, as a, as a fan, I, I think I, I must be one of the traditional um, winning the Premier League and beating United twice a season is what matters to me because I didn't feel that down. I didn't feel that upset. It was the same, actually, again, you know, in Porto with, with Chelsea, I was there with my son. The fact I was there watching my team in a Champions League final with my son overshadowed any other emotion. Yeah, of course I was sick. Of course I was Thank frustrated. You. But I felt you know, it's a lot worse in many, many other games where City have lost than that. Those we knew the outcome were... of that game before it even kicked off, though I didn't want to miss all the team. Yeah. That's because we know more than Pep. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the same hairstyle, Jeff. And he well, watches mm. our podcast. Mm. Yeah. So, um, Newcastle. In fact, with Jeff on, being on here tonight, you could actually put it out there and say Pep's on, because he looks very much like Pep. Yeah. Well, l- l- yeah, it's funny you should say that, because uh, my, I was having a discussion with my wife, because she was sort of... You know, having a little look and thinking, oh, I really quite fancy Pep. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm, I'm in here. No, no, she doesn't see the similarity <laughs> at all, John. So that, that one's not going to work. But uh, Pep's got another fan in uh, in our Nicky. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Newcastle. I thought it was brilliant. I just, I just, I was a little bit apprehensive. You know, going into the game, I thought, oh, you know, after after the. After after Liverpool after Liverpool draw for will we what you know again we were, we was brilliant from from minute one. We normally mess up after somebody else has given us a, an advantage, and I was expecting it, but brilliant. There wasn't yeah. there wasn't one bad performance. Uh, no. From from the keeper all the way, you know, even sort of substitutes who come on. I thought Grealish was, you know, the second half. He, I don't know where he's got that turn of pace from, but you know, to to settle those two two goals, which could be crucial, Alex. You know, come the end of this end of this, say the end of the season in in three games time. You know, where the goal difference could come in, like we've, we've sort of like Definitely. four on them now. I was quite worried when I found out like a few weeks ago, that actually Liverpool have a better goal difference than us. And it's such a relief that we are now ahead, both with points and the goal difference. To me, that's that's a huge boost. Yeah, it's interesting, Alex, because I, I don't think enough has been said about that because it wasn't so many weeks ago that Liverpool had a, a significant goal. In fact, yeah. so significant yeah. that I think most of us thought, well, we're not going to catch that goal difference. Well, let's hope goal difference isn't the thing. So we've done an amazing job to do that equally strangely listening to your comments about your feelings before the Newcastle game um, genuinely on this one I, I sort of felt very confident which is always worrying when you feel confident but I do feel that where we were a bit lucky is that our next game after Madrid was a home game where the where the team are coming into a warm supportive atmosphere okay the Newcastle fans are pretty loud and you know after, it was a bit boring after the 27th time the, they the about City about fans we, we were we were brilliant and that's that's yeah. that's what we we was hoping for if if we'd have gone to West Ham for example as the next game I'm not saying we would have lost but I, you know I think it would have been a very different kettle of fish I think it was the right game it's a game where Newcastle haven't really got anything to play for 
that it was always going to be an open game, which which suits us compared with where they shut up shop, which had a knock on the door. So I, I did feel confident against that, having watched City a long, long time, probably a little bit longer than anyone else here. I knew what what's going to happen, and you know we'll win that, and we'll, we'll go into the last game three points clear, and the the less experienced City fans will be thinking, oh, well, here we go, no problem. Well, ten years ago. Perhaps it was an interesting, uh, an easier task. And, you know, you, you, I don't know about you, but I keep running through all the different scenarios that could be, the, what's the worst one? And I keep coming up with sort of, you know, we're one nil down and just going into injury time and Liverpool need one more goal in their game to, to pip us on goal difference. You know, and then you get the sort of horrendous one where Van Dijk scores in the last minute or something like that of injury time. Um, or Milner scores, perhaps even worse. Um, but then the positive side comes in, and you think, well, yeah, but you know, maybe they get a last-minute penalty, they miss, and all sorts of things. But that's where I, I, I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope Liverpool slip up, and I hope that we're we're safe going into that game. But I can just see us being three points ahead, and everyone thinking, oh, this shouldn't be a problem. And, and then you know, could it be a sort of a, a, a reenact? We we always said nothing could be like ten years ago. Well, I maybe hope it not. Could. Uh, I, I, well, you lose all your hair then. With, with, with Gerard, <laughs> maybe, maybe you know they will slip up. But you know, well, it's happened, it's happened oh, yeah. before. They've but just equalised against Villa anyway. Who has? Liverpool have just equalised against Villa. They was losing one 0 Your <laughs> Wi-Fi is definitely slow. That was about ten minutes ago, John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've tried. Yeah. <laughs> I've, all my attention's been to, to the to the show here, John. You know, met <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I just you know, two tricky you know two tricky games coming up. Got wolves to, wolves tomorrow night. You know, by, yep. by you know it's if we get through the next two matches unscathed, I do believe Liverpool will slip up. Pardon the pun. Uh, I really do in in their last three games, and, and tonight could be one of them. If they if they was to draw tonight, John, and we win tomorrow, is that is that is that game over? <laughs> yeah. I think it's game over now, to be honest with you. Okay. Well, what one interesting one. Uh, this have you have you heard this going around about the Liverpool players? Then that's 36% of the Liverpool players have got asthma. Uh yeah, apparently it's more than that, isn't it? Uh, 60. Oh, is it 68%? Uh, yeah. And and the, the national average is twelve percent. Yeah, they're making history. Is is this something to this or 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 not, Jeff? I don't know. I'm mean, sort of a little bit respect to them for putting that out. Really, I mean, normally you don't put stuff out like that on the. Was it actually a fans podcast or something that came out, and you know they didn't have to do that. So that that was quite interesting. I, I think it's one of those things that's actually been known for quite a long time, just hasn't really come out. Um, you know, if, if it is, it is, but it, it sort of doesn't matter really, does it? At the end of the day, I think compared with um, our our defensive in, if you said what's going to have, have the biggest impact, it is, you know, potentially our, our defensive injuries, you know, that puts us in a weaker situation. Maybe we've got to score more than we concede in the last three games. I don't, I don't know. I'd be more worried about that. But it, but it's an interesting one, and um, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to get some sort of response from even if it's off the record from someone, you know, our medical staff or whatever, in terms of whether that is a legitimate way of getting around it but I, I find it hard to believe that with all of the sophisticated measures put in place now that that actually is a way of getting around it but I know, think, I think nothing so, would surprise me I think somebody somewhere will look into that uh, at the end of the season to you know and maybe you we will probably see new rules come in or it's monitored different you know because surely some somebody will investigate it you know somewhere the powers that be and stuff like that uh so yeah, the, the next the next two next two games for me are crucial. I'd be quite confident going into the Villa game at the last game of the season. Pretty much. Hmm? Pretty much. Uh, no, the, Villa, I, I would. the Villa game, I'm quite rude about. But because... if all our players had a little puff on a blue and ailer before they run out, would it make your confidence levels much higher? <laughs> um I, I, I'm not used to doing every breathing, me. I, you know, I'll, I'll run. I'll run. I'm not built for running, Jeff. <laughs> so, uh, with the with the players, who knows? Who, who knows? Mm. Oh, apparently, Brad, Bradley Wiggins got uh, banned for it, didn't he? Yeah, different sport, but I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that won't be looked at. 
Right, so the scenario is Liverpool draw tonight, John, because you, you sort of answered the question. We beat Wolves. Is that it? Yeah. I know, I know you said you think it is now, but I think it's too 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 close at the minute. Well, it's it, it, on the you must then be assuming, John, that we are definitely going to win um, at West Ham because if um, if we didn't, then we're back to where we are now or worse. So, and, and we're not saying it's definite now. So, your assumption, presumably, is that we'll win at West Ham and then, yeah. you know, home and dry. Yeah, I think we'll win at West Ham. <clears throat> um, I think we'll win all three games now. Because yeah. we've been in this situation before with Liverpool breathing down our necks and we've just got on with it and just won every game. Um, they know that. They've been in this situation before chasing us and they didn't win then. And I, I don't think, think they're going to win I, now. I just think there's going to be another twist somewhat somewhere along the line. I really? You know, it's... It's exciting for the neutral. But if the goal me, difference stays about a, be, past ahead of them, then we can actually lose a game and still win the league. I don't want that. Remind me when, when's the cup final? Uh, that next weekend. weekend. Right, I so think we'll, it's on Saturday. Right. So there's another factor, isn't there? I mean, and that's another. It's an additional game, effectively, for Liverpool yeah. in terms of tiredness, in terms of injuries. Yeah. yeah. Would you actually say that they don't want? They've got an A list. They'll, they'll be okay, Jeff. They've got an A list. They can run all, <laughs> run all year. Yeah, maybe that's why they need them. But I, you know, it, uh, when we went out of that competition, you know, it, there was a little bit of thinking. Well, it is another. You know, this and Klopp actually gets an awful lot of things wrong. But he did make the point. Well, this is why you, you know no one's won the, the quadruple, and probably no one ever will. We went through the same situation. Well, it wasn't the same, was it? Because I thought the media pressure we had on to win the quadruple was another level compared with, like with yeah. us, it was, well, if you don't win the quadruple, it's a failure. Whereas with Liverpool, it's, um, oh, wouldn't it be great, you know, for the country if they won the quadruple and now they're not going to, well, it you know, doesn't really matter. But, you know, it, it's, I, I know it sounds like I'm, and I'm not one of those that sort of whinges about um, the media and Liverpool and so on, but just on that particular point, factually, it, it was a hugely different um level of pressure and where the media came from. I think if, if if Pep wanted to make a point, perhaps a little bit more subtly than he did, I'd probably focus on individual issues like that, where you can almost sort of almost prove your case in terms of the way the media has been, rather than just a sort of general uh, you know, every, everyone was supporting Liverpool. Jeff, what, what, knows, isn't what true. a brilliant Pep in, you know, when he when he cited Liverpool, everyone, everyone wants Liverpool to win. That was just like a little Yeah, that's why he did it. Oh, yeah. you know, you know, it, and it, it was fa it was factual. You know, it, you know, they, they are quite successful in Europe, but they have only won one Premier League in in, in 30, thirty years. Mm. You know, so it's but everybody, it peps right. Everybody, other than City fans and probably Everton fans, I, mean, I even know United fans who, who want Liverpool to win the league, and it's just like really. So if that's the other way round, then, like. We've never won the Champions League, so if we don't win it, even though we win the league, it's failure. But if they win the Champions League and don't win the Premier League, it shouldn't that equally then be a failure for them? So, totally. Yeah, by all means. And I'm always, I'm always in the camp as well where the Premier League is harder to win. You know, you get luck in the in knockout comp competitions as we've as we've seen. You know, this this season. Uh, with especially with the Madrid game and stuff like that, it's the look of the draw as well. Look who Liverpool have drawn, you know, in the, you know, after the group stages, nowhere near as strong as the teams what we have. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't it be funny. Yeah, Liverpool only ended up with the League Cup. Just on that, and, and you know, I've been interested in, in all your views because it does sound again like a, a, a little bit of a, of a whinge. But if you sort of go back over, I don't know. 20 years, 30 years, and look at the sides that have won the Champions League that clearly weren't the best side in Europe, that had, you know, a lot of luck along the way, compared with a side that's won, whether it be the, you know, uh, the, the Premier League or any of the other European leagues, who sort of fluked their way into it, but weren't the best side in the, you know, for, for me, it, it just hit home after, after when we went out, saying, well, actually, it isn't an excuse. And yes, we should 
be capable of winning the Champions League with the squad that we've got. But it's it's more of a lottery. It is a knockout. And as soon as it's a knockout, then you know, luck and other factors play a part. The real measure has to be winning, winning the league. That's not to say our ambition shouldn't be to win the Champions League. I'm not saying that. But but it is quite, you know, it's not the measure of necessarily being the best side in Europe. I, I absolutely agree. And even not even just in European competitions, as in club football, was it... Uh... Was it was it Greek Greece uh, or Denmark who was a, a wild card going into the European yeah. Championships? You know, yeah. and they, they just got in there by by fluke, and they and they ended up winning it. You know, yeah. any, anything can happen in knockout in knockout football, but pre, Premier League every every day of the week for me. So, yeah. is the Pep, thing is, is Pep signing about, it, John? You should know. Well, is Pep signing a new contract on Friday? Three years. It's already done, mate. I think it'll be announced with the Ireland thing because I think that's it's already done. It was done weeks ago. Celebrity John strikes. That would be that would be absolutely fantastic news. <laughs> One of the reasons Harlan is signing is because Pep's staying. Mm-hmm. Good it, point. No, it is, and there's, there's no way, Jeff. That uh, get, let let right. We're obviously we're a, we're a massive club as it as it were, but. Haaland, everybody, everybody wants to play for Pep, don't they? So he, that's got to be a huge factor in any any player coming to us. Well, I bow to John's knowledge. He obviously knows, you know, definitely, whereas we're, we're sort of uh, assuming, but the assumption has to be that there'll be some announcement about that. You can't see Haaland coming here if it was like after a season, you know, Pep's going to disappear off. So, yeah, ho- hopefully that will uh, that'll complete a great, uh, a, a great week. Well, along with the uh, 93-20, uh, celebrations um, in Manchester that I don't know if any of you guys are going to that maybe more difficult for Alex but uh, cool. see you there. I was going to say I'll buy, you, I'll buy you first pint John but it's, for, it's a free voucher <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. So, some, of, some of us wasn't lucky enough to, to get to, to get to go you know it was luck as well it was, it was a ballot there. I mean, there's no implication there because of you know old contacts or whatever because it was actually a, a pure ballot and we came out and couldn't believe it of course it was wasn't it John can't believe you're saying that. Can you believe that? Of course it was, wasn't it, John? John, was it? Was it? Well, I'm not saying it, nothing. Was it just people oh. look at the, look at the draw, John? John, his well, Wi-Fi is going down again. <laughs> so, John, was it just pure look at the draw? Yes, mate. Say it without smiling. Yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll both send off, uh, we'll send copies of the emails that we have from City to, to prove it back to Andy afterwards and do that, can't we? No need, yeah, by all means. No need to believe you. Anyway. It'd be uh, a great night. Anything else for us guys? I've, I've, you know, Summit, I've, I've looked Re- tonight. Regarding I've looked- that last statement about flukes into leagues. Into 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 dues, do you mean? Yeah, flukes. Liverpool. Like, e- emails. If and- Alisson hadn't scored that header, they would not even have been in the Champions League. Correct. So they only just scrape getting in it. Mm. Don't matter, is it? They're irrelevant. But it's not. It's not a league of champions, is it? That's Never just. Was. That's just. No. Yeah, we've been in the Champions League when we've not been champions, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. So it. it but it's still not a league of champions, and it, it. At the end of the day, it's just a cup, cup, a cup competition, and the hardest thing to win is your league. And the Premier League I'm, is the I'm hardest a, thing to win. I'm a traditionalist, me. I think only champions should be going into the Champions League. Uh, well, it all changes again next season, doesn't it? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, over the next few seasons, I think it's a fate. Yeah. I was just thinking, actually, just came to mind in terms of timing. And again, probably it proves as to maybe why this wasn't completely planned. But had we announced the signing of Haaland and then announced a three year uh, increase in uh, extension on Pep's contract, and then announced a miserly three percent increase in season ticket prices. Do you think there would have been the same um, level of outcry from certain quarters if it had been planned, announced, explained in the right way, all the background as well about financial fair play, the need for sustainability, the need to increase our turnover, um, watching the best side in the league, Harland, Pep? It's still would there more. be a real <laughs> argument to say, you know, that there's anything wrong with the small increase in season ticket prices? We'll, uh, we'll still get accused of ruining yeah. football, won't we? No, but people will still moan no matter what. Um, in the day, we're a lot more 
better club than other clubs. It's like Liverpool when they were putting all their on their staff on furlough. We never did. We never even thought about that. So the financial side of it, they have got it right. And yes, there is inflation, and inflation means things go up. Fuel's inflation gone up. means that they should have gone up probably eight nine percent. Yeah, by all means. And they've, and, not, they've not gone up for a few years as well. So, you know, you know, fair, fair play to City. They've been, listen, we, we, have to, we have to pay, you know, regardless. Of, we have to pay for, the if we want to see quality, we've got to pay for it. You know, you've got some clubs who, who don't see a fraction of quality, what we do, and their season tickets are a lot higher. So I, th- I Arsenal. think... Arsenal, Arsenal for one. I, I, think we, I think we do well as, a, as, as fans, you know, you know, to get our... Mm. our, our well, um, I've, just, I've I've got three seasons. Well, there's four of us in a row. Me, my brother, and my two daughters. So I've got three season tickets. Um, I've just made youngest hers is two twenty for the season because she's under eighteen. I've just got Rhiannon one, the seat next to me, um, and hers is five hundred and five because she's eighteen. And then I've got mine, which is eight sixty. So. Mm. About fifteen hundred quid a year. Hang on a minute! Don't OAPs get them uh, cheaper? <laughs> no, it's my brother in two years. He's an OAP then. <laughs> my mine will be six hundred and fifteen pounds for well, and obviously my sons as well because I, I pay for that. Uh, yeah. But it's it's money well spent if you want to see the best players in the world. You know, you know it it comes it comes at a premium. Yeah, yeah I, of course it does. I, I, I think that's right. I, I, sorry, Alex. Go on. Yeah, I just want to see high quality and entertainment. Yeah, I mean, I think if, 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 if I could be slightly, well, it's not critical really, but, you know, how could it have been handled better? Um, to me, communication is absolutely everything. I mean, you know, even, even back in the day when I was at City, um, we didn't get communication right all the time, but it was, it was always a focus. There was always sort of going out to supporters clubs and doing everything we could to communicate and, and, and show we understood, if you like. I think that there could have been more... I mean, I'm not sure what's happening with City Matters. I've not sort of heard anything. They used to be published. They used to publish minutes of meetings and things. Then COVID hit. Nothing's come back since then. But I, I think I think if there had been not not communication, but a general piece going out about financial fair play, the changes, the need to grow turnover, um, maybe some stats about relative season ticket prices compared with other clubs. You know, we've we've definitely got the cheapest, the lowest yeah. price season ticket we've got is the lowest in the country. I'm not saying all of them are. You can argue about match match prices, but I think if there'd have been a bit of a background piece and stuff going out around that, uh, around the consultation, City Matters, because there must have been some, something, presumably, then that probably would have saved what was a bit of a storm in the key, an unnecessary storm in the teacup, I thought. Because although I do get the point about, yes, the owners could, if they wanted to, subsidise season ticket, you, you could actually potentially reduce season ticket prices. Yeah. But there has to be an understanding that we, we have to, to move towards um, sustainability as, as a business and that's what they're trying to do globally you know, we only see really the, the Manchester bit don't we and we're probably most of us that's all we're really interested in if, if we're truthful but also the, the, the bigger global business growth supports what we're trying to achieve in the long term when one day there may be a change of ownership, a change of ownership or change of manager etc etc so I, I, I think it was a, a, a well maybe a storm in a teacup so you know um, underplaying it because there were statements from you know various representative bodies and i think at a time when we should be celebrating everything should be positive it, it, it perhaps could have been avoided as well and, so. and let's, yeah. let's not let's not forget as well you know the the amount it, they've gone up the season ticket yeah it, people are falling on hard times and stuff like that but you know how much money would not just city but you know every club have lost you know through covid and stuff like i know attendances you know especially you know money on things like pies and stuff like that they want to sold John um so I, th- I think the increase is quite quite decent you know in comparison to well to- also you're paying 10 installments 10 interest free installments which makes yeah. a massive difference in terms of cash flow it never used to be the case no. and when um, clubs started bringing in um installment plans they had a you know an APR not 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 FO, so it mm. wasn't it wasn't basically uh, interest free so that i think you know is, it certainly makes a difference to us i'm sure to to, to most people you know that you, know, you haven't got that big wodge going out um so I, there's a lot of positives around it i think really and we, i mean we sit sort of second row of the top tier 
which I think is about the best place to be in some ways because it's a little bit cheaper up there. You get a great view and there's no danger of any of the seats being taken over for, for corporate clubs because clearly that second tier, there's more and more infiltration into, into new corporate bars and so on. And I think that may extend in the future. Um, and, so, you're, and you're away from John? Never even thought about that one, to be honest. <laughs> I'm bottom to you. <sighs> which, which stand, though? Colin Bell, next oh, to so Pep. Actually look, even better, I can look down on John then. Every, yes. every, everybody does anyway. Everyone wants to tell them. <laughs> right, guys. Uh, loved, I loved it tonight. Absolutely br- brilliant, brilliant uh, show. Anybody else get anything before we, we go and get our Horlicks and celebrate for the winning? Come on, Aston Villa, I suppose. Yeah, apart from Aston last game of the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apart from last game of the season. But but I've got it sussed out. It'll, it'll be, we'll need... We'll need a goal, and Jack Grealish will just pop one in and do a knee slide all the way, all the way to Pep. You, I think Villa hate us now, you know, because we took Gareth Barry, their captain, last time, and now we've took Grealish, their captain, this time. And Fabian Delph. Yeah, and Delph, but they weren't that bothered about Delph at the time. He was still their captain, wasn't he? Still Everton's best player at the moment. And he's injured. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, I can't resist saying this. I shouldn't, but they are one of those teams that we, we do well against, you know, home and away. They've always been yeah. a, a good one for us going back over many, many years. So, yeah. you know, I, I, it's not five, my fault five, if it goes one, wrong, is it? 5-1 David White scored four. I was there that night. Micka yeah. Richards in the FA Cup. Boom. When, when he uh, made his TV debut. On an interview after with a few choice swear words. And on more unhappy times, of course, we did have a manager that took us and Villa down in the same season. Yeah, I can't see that happening again, such wood. No, not right, again. Guys, uh thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh especially especially you, Jeff. It's been it's been a pleasure, my friend. Not at all. No, it's a it's a pleasure. Hopefully we'll repeat some time and um yeah, appreciate we'll, uh, having me on. I really, really enjoyed it. It's good, we will it's good to chat. We will definitely, definitely get you on again, my friend, and we'll uh, we'll do it again very, very soon. All right. Enjoy the match tomorrow, guys. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye bye now. Take care. Take care.